See me walking down the avenue. Walking in here at my side. I take it everywhere. After two decades, the United States Congress has voted to lift the ban on the federal funding of needle exchange programs. This finally allows organizations providing this harm reduction service to apply for federal funds. The short movie explains why and how needle exchange programs save lives and protect communities. I'm an alien, I'm a legal alien, I'm an English modern can you define what needle exchange is and, and, and how does it protect communities? Syringe exchange arose out of the HIV epidemic that emerged amongst injection drug users. Injection drug users were sharing contaminated syringes and other injection equipment and so a syringe exchange is an opportunity for a drug user to get clean sterile new syringes and to dispose of their old used syringes and that becomes a way in which we can establish contact with drug users who traditionally are often outside of all kinds of social services and begin to build a relationship. People come in and uh, they, all, they all have a code. I get the code from them and enter it into the AIR system. Uh, ask them if they're returning any. This is where uh, used syringes go. If you're using um, a syringe exchange, that means you're not sharing needles, you're getting fresh, clean needles, and you're disposing of them properly so you don't have to worry about no one stepping on them, them being in the park, so them being in any place that they shouldn't be. So you're putting 50 in, right? Yeah. How many would you like? 50. Back in the mid-80s, New York City was known as the epicenter for HIV and injection drug use uh, in the world. Um, more than 50% of the drug users in New York, and there were about uh, 200,000 of them, were, were had AIDS because you didn't even have HIV in those days. You went, you know, we didn't know what HIV was. You had AIDS, and the New York City Department of Health began to investigate starting a syringe exchange in New York City back in 1986. But now we have um, about 17 programs in New York City that supply syringes to drug users, and it's had an enormous impact. As I said, we had over 50% of our drug users had AIDS back in the late 80s. Um, and now it's down to uh, under 10%. And that is solely because of the impact of syringe exchange. 5 to 10% of people who inject drugs in this country are accessing syringe exchange programs, which would translate to maybe 50, 100,000 people a year. And we're probably in the range of 25 million syringes going out through syringe exchange programs in any given year. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 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 I benefited personally from using needle exchange services in the fact that I was able to obtain clean syringes and use them without uh, being a danger to myself by damaging my skin or re-injecting uh, materials from a used syringe and I, I was able to live a healthier life. I'm healthier now than I've ever been in my life. When I was uh, uh, active, uh, shooting heroin and cocaine, I came here to get my syringes and uh, I uh, credit that for uh, saving me from uh, STDs and and everything. And we're talking about a quarter of a million dollars on upwards uh, for each case of HIV for the lifelong medical costs. Whereas the cost of a syringe is, is more in the realm of a dime, 10 cents. So if you're looking at cost effectiveness, obviously investing in prevention is going to save you a lot of money. I grew up around injectors. My mother and father were both injectors for the vast majority of my life, uh, early at life. and. Um, uh, my mother has is co-infected, so um, I feel very connected to this movement. I believe if she, if harm reduction had been around as a, as a principal and an organization like this had been around, she wouldn't be uh, having to deal with the, uh, the diseases she's dealing with now. And more importantly, I wish people had treated her with respect. Uh, that we make a trademark, I think here. Men are smack of men. Someone say he's a hero of the day. It takes a man to suffer a great 
hands and smile Be yourself And no matter what they say Oh, oh I'm an alien I'm a legal alien I'm an Englishman in the young What are the other services Syringe Exchange provides for drug users? Through the Syringe Exchange you can begin to um, build things into drug users' lives that they were previously not um, associated with. So medical care, getting people to medical systems, mental health care, because mental health is a serious major issue for people, often for people who use drugs uh, and maybe uh, living on the street or whatever. We provide a lot of support groups for people. We could do a lot of HIV testing. Uh, a lot of STD testing. We do could do TB testing and provide uh, medications both for managing people's HIV uh, or managing their tuberculosis. We are beyond just a needle exchange, and I think we look at the drug user. We have a more holistic approach that you know it isn't just the harms associated with using drugs, but it's also the harms associated with being poor and homeless or being hungry. Uh, our social determinants of health that we really miss out on and. And also needle exchanges are, are also a lot of times um, staffed by users themselves. And so there's the experts. They uh, have groups here. One was hepatitis C. I suspected I had it. And I uh, enrolled in a group. And they uh, uh, hooked me up with a doctor. And the doctor put me on interferon. And now my viral load is, is very low. This is our overdose prevention kit. Uh, we hold trainings for our uh, participants um, on Tuesdays and Fridays so that they can actually be able to carry this, so that they can actually save a life for someone who they may be injecting with and vice versa, someone can save their life. It comes with uh, two alcohol swaps. This is the magic formula that, uh, that actually uh, reverses the opiate overdose. This is what happens in each kit. We give two of each because, you know, just to be sure. It's a uh, muscle shot, not a uh, vein shot. And for gloves, of course, for sanitary reasons. And if it comes to that, rest your breathing, which is part of the training. We give them a quick uh, uh, knowledge of it. The fact that many people think that uh, syringe exchange um, empowers people to use drugs is, is a myth. Um, first of all, um, it's a well-known fact that drug use is going to occur whether we have syringe exchange or not. Uh, what we are propagating is that we want people to use safely and not spread the disease or, or do harm to themselves or others, their community or their family members and everybody who can be affected by it. If an individual is going to use, they're going to use, but they're not going to use any more or any less. If an individual chooses to lose, use more drugs, that's a conscious choice that they made, whatever the situation may be. But they're not going to do that due to the fact that someone's giving them a syringe. And an individual that does not use a syringe is not going to just pick up a syringe and say, oh, let me try a syringe because there's a syringe exchange in the area. A lot of the people I've worked with previously when I ran a new exchange program had been to drug treatment many, many, many times. If it worked and if it was that simple, they wouldn't be coming back. Once people slow down around um, the chaotic drug scene perhaps, they can begin to strategize about what else they want to do in, with their lives and begin to think about what their drug use means to them and how they might want to change their relationship to the drugs they use. So there's people always available at syringe exchange programs to provide counseling and case management. One of the things that I learned very quickly from doing needle exchange is that people came for the needles but that was the first step. They asked for other things. And one of the big things they asked for is help with drug treatment. Long-standing syringe exchange programs haven't had community opposition. That any kind of fears the community have begin to go away after a while when, when they begin to see the benefits. The ways that HIV is transmitted link all of us together. So even though the proportion of people in the United States who inject drugs is relatively small, you know, in the ballpark of a million people, what happens to their health is important to all of us. Be yourself, no matter what they say. Be yourself, no matter what they say. Be yourself, no matter what they say. Be yourself. No